Alright, today our topic was to explain how patch clamps can be used to determine what ions can pass through a specific channel type. First, we want to go through the patch clamp techniques that we've already gone through in class. The first is the cell attached recording. In this situation, there's a tight seal between the membrane and the pipette, so no ions can flow th in between that area, only through the pipette. So for the cell attached recording, you'll end up having only the ions flow through the pipette and not in between your membrane, and you'll measure this electrical current through the cell attachment that's on your pipette. If there is strong suction, you'll end up having a whole cell recording. The membrane patch in the pipette will be disrupted, causing the cell cytoplasm to become continuous with the interior of the pipette. This method allows currents and potentials to be measured for the entire cell. To perform an inside-out recording, you're going to want to make a tight seal between the membrane and glass pipette. Then you're going to going to withdraw the micropipette quickly from the cell. This leaves a patch of membrane attached to the micropipette and exposes the intracellular surface of the membrane to the external media. This configuration makes it possible to study influence of intracellular molecules on ion channel function. For an outside-out recording, the electrode is slowly withdrawn from the cell, allowing a bulb of membrane to bulge irregularly out from the cell. If the pipette is pulled far enough, the bulge attaches from the cell and reforms as a convex membrane on the end of the electrode. The original outside of the membrane is facing outward from the electrode. This confirmation helps aid the study of how channel activity is influenced by extracellular chemical signals such as neurotransmitters. We can use the patch clamp method to study the passage of ions through specific ion channels activated by neurotransmitters. For example, we can determine which ions are passing through the nicotinic cholinergic receptor. We are using our pipette to get an outside-out confirmation of the patch clamp method. We now have a nicotin nicotinic cholinergic receptor on our pipette. When acetylcholine binds to the receptor, so, uh, a particular ion may now go through the receptor. Sodium ions are now entering. Okay, once you've run your experiment and have your quantitative results, you can graph this with the x-axis as your time, which is usually going to be milliseconds, and y-axis as your current, which is measured in picoamperes. If you have ions moving through your channel of interest, you'll have a depolarization shown by a downward movement in the plotted graph line. That would be like here, 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 here. These would be examples of ions going through your single ion channel. To see which specific ion it is, you can look at the reversal potential, which is where the postsynaptic current reverses from positive to negative, or where it hits zero. The reversal potential correlates with the equilibrium potential for a specific ion. If an ion channel only supports one type of ion, for example, sodium, the reversal potential for the current would be about positive 70 millivolts. If your ion channel supports more than one specific ion, then the reversal potential will be in between each ion's individual equilibrium potential. Let me show that to y'all. In the case of nicotinic cholinergic receptors in the book, the reversal potential for that ion channel is between the equilibrium potential for sodium and potassium. Doing this, it will show that sodium and potassium both flow through your specific ion channel. In this case, it will be nicotinic cholinergic receptors.